Hey, what's up? It's Marie Forleo, and you are watching Marie TV, the place to be to create a business and life you love. And this is the Marie TV call in show where we take live calls and try to help some people out. This is Gregory Patterson. Well, howdy doody. Always the one who making me look fabulous with the hair. And I just love him. We just have a good time together. So let's do this. Hello? Roxanne? Yes? It's Marie Forleo, and you are on the Marie TV call-in show. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> yes, you're on. There's Team Forleo here, Gregory's here, and we are Ooh. so excited to connect with you. So tell us your question, and we will do our very best to help you out. Oh my goodness, my goodness gracious. So... Thank you so much for, for, for calling me, and I just love you, absolutely love you. I, 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 um, I discovered you not too long ago, and I am wanting to understand how to present myself, and I, I want to um, understand how to present myself with vulnerability, uh, show my vulnerability, and still show that I'm capable of helping people, um, guiding and coaching. Great. Tell me more. So I'm coming from a past with trauma. Um, I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, and I use art forms as my primary form of recovery practice. And I would love to share with other people how to recover their creative selves, whether they think of themselves as artists or not, because I think that creativity is very healing. And so I... I've always been a very private person, and I was never sure how much to divulge and how to present myself. I, and so I, I'm kind of on the line of I feel like if I, if I don't share, then I just really won't connect yes. with people. Yes, I agree. So first of all, I'm so happy that you're sharing this question. I know that we have tens of thousands and in the world there are millions of people who also have PTSD or battle against anxiety or depression or any range and numbers of issues that in the past has had some stigma with it. But as you said, those days are over. And so many of us need to share honestly and bravely about the things that we struggle with. And personally, Roxanne, I think mm -hmm. that people who share about what they've been through and frankly, what they're still going through and what they're, what they're battling against, those are the people that we trust the most. You know, mm -hmm. in this world of coaching and personal development and experts, I think the old model was all about some sage on the stage. That's always like I, how I characteristic, how I like to characterize it, where, you know, someone mm -hmm. was standing up there and pretending like they have all the answers and they never make any mistakes and they're going to kind of bestow on you this wisdom and, and guide you to the promised land. First of all, I think all of that is bullshit. I think it's so inauthentic. <laughs> it is not true. Every single one of us is a work in progress. We are all learning. We're all trying our best. We will all face challenges, not only the ones that we've had in our past, but there's ones coming up in the future. So I yeah. always like to describe myself never as a sage on the stage and always as a guide on the side. So what does that mean? That means I'm someone who is really enthusiastic, first of all, about learning, Second of all, about using ideas for myself to see what works and what doesn't. And then mm -hmm. third, with sharing those ideas, the things that I think are valuable with folks who mm -hmm. might also be interested and might also want to try these things. So I think yeah. for you making that internal shift, like, you know what, Roxanne, you're a guide on the side and you have every right to share things, not like you're better than or less. And I know that's not the total <laughs> crux of your question. We'll get to the sharing mm -hmm. and the vulnerability in a minute. But I like mm -hmm. that framework because mm -hmm. it allows me to then pour myself into a positioning where I'm not better, I'm not less, and I can look at what to share that is mm -hmm. relevant for my audience. Mm -hmm. And I think right. this word relevance will be really important for you as you move ahead. So know that sharing about your PTSD and the details mm -hmm. that um, surround it how much you mm -hmm. share is completely up to you. You can start mm -hmm. off dipping your toe in the water, telling one or two stories. 
have mm-hmm. your comfort level expand. And then as you continue to engage with your audience, you'll know and you'll feel where you may want to keep some details private just because that feels authentic to you. And other places mm-hmm. where you're like, you know what, I really do need to share this because all of these other folks in my audience have battled something similar and it'll help them know they're not alone. Yes. And, and you know, I really love the fact that you say that talk about sharing stories as opposed to sharing uh, diagnoses, for example. Yes. Saying, oh, PTSD, you know, it, it's a, it, I mean, it, I think it's more authentic to talk about what it is and what the experience of it is as opposed to just the name of it. That's right. And so one way that you can frame it is you can say, hey, all of us have had challenging things that we've battled in our past. All of us have had things that we've experienced before that may be holding us back now, and we're not quite sure how to move through them. For me, I can tell you a story about this, or I can tell you a story about this time when I was 15 or when I was 11. Mm -hmm. And how that manifests for me now is X, Y, and Z. And I want to take you on this journey moving forward so we can both learn, so we can all support Mm -hmm. each other, so I can share Mm -hmm. with you some of the tools and the understandings and the strategies that not only have helped me, but that have continued and do continue to help me. And we can learn as we move forward together. So can you see how with that type of framing, you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable, but you're also Mm -hmm. still communicating that you're capable? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. This helpful? Tremendously helpful. It's very affirming. I think I was there in my mind, and I think there was a fear of just dipping that toe in the water and moving forward. Uh, but once I make a decision, I'm ready to go. <laughs> yes, Roxanne. That's what we like to hear. And just know <laughs> this is a process for all of us. I think we're living in such a, a new time that can be filled with some conflicts, right? About how much do we share about ourselves? This online space and the span of human history, having these tools available to us where we can share everything and people can comment and people can get upset. And a lot of people, you know, are very brave. Uh, with their anonymity behind a keyboard, but they say things they would never say to you in person. So I think uh, it's natural to feel some of that trepidation. It's natural to have some of those inner conflicts with how much do I share. But when you're committed to not only a message, but to transforming other people's lives and having them feel safe around you and letting them know that they're not alone, it becomes a lot easier. So we take that light and rather than shining it on ourselves and our fear, we turn it outward to being of service. And for me, that has made Made all the difference. Oh my goodness. Awesome. Yes. You me too. Awesome. For so too. Roxanne, yeah. you keep us posted. We're going to be cheering you on and uh, I can't wait to hear your updates as they come along. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to start this challenge for women. Uh, and, and I just, I really adore you, Marie. Thank you so much for your help and uh, have a great rest of the day. You, you too. We adore you too, darling. Good luck with your challenge. Bye. Thank you. Hello? Hi, is this Esther? Yes, this is Esther. Hey, it's Marie Forleo, and you are on the Marie TV call-in show. How's it going? Oh, my God. This is awesome. Yes, it is awesome. You're here (laughs) with Team Forleo and Gregory, and we are so excited. So tell us your question, and we will do our very best to help you out. Sure. Um, My husband and I, we recently started a blog-based business called Wayfinders Now, and we are in the process of trying to figure out exactly what our niche should be. Mm-hmm. And some examples of ones that we have are we live on a 35-foot sailboat. Um, I'm learning as, about sailing. Uh, we're both artists. We've cultivated more flexible work lives. We're caregivers for a loved one with dementia. We're also wanting to incorporate um, zero waste and sustainability practices. I'm also a woman of color, so we've got a lot of like areas of interest. Yeah. So I guess my main question is like, should we narrow down or not necessarily? And how can I be more intentional about how we can serve our audience? 
Absolutely. Well, first of all, Esther, I just think it's so incredible. Clearly, you are a multi-passionate entrepreneur. Clear, clearly, you and your husband, you guys are very creative beings, and there are so many of us in the world. So I think there's a lot of folks listening right now who's like, oh my gosh, how did they figure that out? I would kind of like to be on a sailboat. That's amazing. So I'm going to ask you a few questions, and we'll see if we can help you find some clarity. First, awesome. are you guys making money with this business right now? No, we are not. Okay. So then it sounds like you have created your life and we don't need to get into this. I don't want you to divulge in anything that you don't feel comfortable with, but you've created your life in such a way where you don't necessarily need an income from this new business at this point. Is that correct? That is correct. Cool. Um, yeah, we're able to be flexible where one of us can kind of hold down the fort, so to speak. Well, and about a month and a half ago, I've, I've had, I've had the liberty to focus solely on this now. Beautiful. For the first time. That's great. That is awesome. Congratulations. We love that. We are cheering that on. What I would encourage you to do is really get clear on what your goals are for this business. Some people start a business and they're like, you know what? It would be amazing if in the next, you know, one year, two years, three years, I could reach this $100,000 in revenue mark. That is a number mm -hmm. I'm pulling out of my butt. Some people mm -hmm. are higher, some people are lower. But when we're talking about a for-profit business, putting some type of financial goal in place is really mm -hmm. helpful, especially at the stage you're at right now, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. When it is a for-profit business, it has to make profit. And for you to right. know how much you would like to make starts to give you something to measure all of your ideas against. You can look at all mm -hmm. of these ideas and go, hmm, you know, being a caregiver for a loved one with dementia, what are the possibilities to earn revenue in that space? What are the services? Mm -hmm. What are the products I could offer? What are the price points? How much would I have to work? How much would I have to make all of this work together in order to possibly reach the financial goal that I've said is important to me? Then mm -hmm. you kind of measure that against sailing. All right, so this is just one framework, just one lens that we're looking through initially because this is not just a simple black and white answer. So Esther, you getting clear on your financial reasons for wanting to start this business is one thing I'm okay. going to encourage you really look at. Then okay. we're going to look at the topic areas, right? Which of the seven, 10, five, three, whatever number that is, when you honestly get real with yourself and you think about devoting five, 10, 15 hours a day to this particular, particular topic area for the next 12 months, 24, 36 months, which of them makes you want to stick a fork in your eye and which of them <laughs> makes your heart light up? Because I will tell mm -hmm. you, like you as a multi-passion entrepreneur, there are many, many different things that I could focus on. There are many ways that we could earn money with the business, but I focus on what brings me to life what makes me come alive, what makes me want to research and talk about and learn about and test literally until my eyeballs could fall out. That's how passionate I am about the things that we say yes to. Mm -hmm. So you put okay. all of your ideas through that lovely filter. Then that'll help you narrow it down. Then you want to think about the market itself, meaning who are the people that you would be serving? So for example, mm -hmm. I know in my own business, I'm dealing with a lot of creatives. I'm dealing with artists. I'm dealing with multi-passionate entrepreneurs, mostly, not all, but mostly. We have a lot of folks in our audience who, even if they do work within a corporate environment, or maybe they work for the government or teachers, there is this creative spirit within them that still finds a way to come to life in their work. For example, I mm -hmm. don't think that I would necessarily work well if I only focused on, let's say, corporate accountants, if that was the only niche that I was going to, because I don't necessarily have a lot in common with just that narrow type of human. Does that make sense? And by the way, for yeah. all the corporate accounts that are mm -hmm. listening, I love you, mother. I'm saying if it was all just you, I might get a little bored because I need some more variety. So does that make sense? You have to serve yeah. people where you feel this deep, heart-centered love towards the audience. You know why? Because you are going to want to work your ass off to deliver mm -hmm. value to them. You're going to mm -hmm. constantly, without feeling the need like you should, you're going to be reading the right magazines. You're going to be going to the conferences. You're going to be naturally finding and unearthing the newest cutting edge research or whatever is necessary to stay at the top of your field. 
So mm -hmm. those are some of the things that I think you should consider. Then once you've narrowed down, you're going to have to mm -hmm. choose one based on your intuition and hit it. What I mean by that, clarity comes from engagement, not thought. There's no magic business crystal ball that's going to be able to tell you, not me, not any other business strategist or coach. And if somebody tells you that they can, run because they're a liar. No one will be able to tell you what will actually work until you get out in the field and start doing it, start engaging, mm -hmm. start working within that industry, even if it's for free. That's where you're going to find mm -hmm. that clarity, Esther. And anytime your mind's like, oh, but I need to figure it all out in advance, say, nope, cut that conversation off and take a step, take action. And remember that clarity comes from engagement, not thought. Oh, so awesome. It's all <laughs> figure outable, right? Esther, we love you. I hope that this was helpful for you. Definitely. Really empowering. Thank you so much for taking the time. Absolutely. Thank you. We're wishing you luck and please do keep us posted on your progress. Definitely. Okay. Take care. Have a great Bye, day. darling. Bye. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Is this Eli Hi. and Joseph? Oh, we could see them. Yes. Hi, you're on with Team Forleo. Gregory's here, and we are so excited to have you on the Marie TV call in show. We're so excited to be talking with you guys. Yay! So tell us your question, and we will do our very best to help you guys out. Okay, so after more than two years of planning and doing B school and designing websites and writing blogs and connecting to our tribe and, you know, sending the surveys and doing all of that stuff and uh, online and live classes. So our question is, we're still limping along a little bit. So our question is, do we keep showing up, trying new approaches and hope that the world starts to take notice? Or at what point do we say, I think we're done and we start barking up another tree? Yes. Great question, you guys. So if I'm understanding correctly, um, some of your retreats, like some of those have sold out. Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. So I want to give, you're getting confetti thrown for you because that's <laughs> awesome. And we always like when things sell out. So a couple of things. We're going to step back for a moment first. Most businesses, in my experience, take much longer than two years. And if I heard you right, a piece of that two years, a large piece of it has been spent learning, understanding, taking classes, really absorbing how to do this. So it's not like it's been two years of nose to the grindstone every single day, like marketing your butts off and putting out all these offers. A big piece of that has been the learning piece. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. Big piece. And it continues to be, I mean, as we get more into it, you know, learning to do the, the uh, online courses and how to launch it and doing the pre-launching and the email sequence. And, you know, yeah. It's, oh, really God. it's overwhelming. I know I am with you. I've been down all of those paths. So all good. I would say understanding that especially these kind of businesses, they're a long game. You know, when you hear stories like, oh my God, I hit six figures in six months. It's like, I want to smack all those people because nine times out of 10, that's not true. It takes time to learn all this stuff. So one of the questions you guys should ask yourself is like, do we love this business or an aspect of this business, one of these offerings enough? to really keep going. You know, for me, I had like seven years of side gigs as I was growing my business, understanding e-courses, understanding how to do launches, understanding how to create content consistently until I got to a place financially and creatively to be able to do my business full time. And my story is not unique. I was actually just writing a chapter in my book about how, and again, this is a different context, but my friend Elizabeth Gilbert, I think it was the first 10 years of her writing career, she had um, side jobs and then she published some books and still had side jobs before things really started to cook and roll. My friend Stephen Pressfield, I feel like it was seven 17 years before he published his first novel. And I understand a business is different than a writing career, but the point is still the same. Things take much longer than we want them to always, especially in the business world. And I think in the online space, it can become easy to be seduced by the success stories of people just hitting it, hitting it fast. And then yeah. we make ourselves feel like 
and think that we're either failures <laughs> or we're not fast enough or this isn't working when really it's just about patience. But your question to yourselves, like, should we bark up another tree? That's less about the results right now and more about you guys tapping in and going, do we want to keep pushing it on this lever? Do we love these retreats so much that we're going to keep barking up this tree, even if it takes us another two to three years to really hit the type of revenue and profit goals that we know we can? The other thing I want to say to you guys is this. When you're starting a business, it's a lot of throwing spaghetti at the wall. It's a lot of seeing what sticks, right? And we don't know yes. that until we actually do it. Sometimes people are like, oh, you've got to have a membership site. And you go to a membership site and you're like, I hate this shit. Or other people are like, oh my God, you got to sell e-courses. <laughs> That's where it all's at. And you're like, you know what? I really don't like it. But you guys are like, oh, these retreats. All of a sudden, these retreats are the things that are selling out. If there's actually an alignment between you guys enjoying this and understanding like, wow, our audience seems to respond to this and there's all these things we could improve, my point is you want to do more of what works. Rather yes. than following a set formula or roadmap or script about what your modern business should look like, I want you guys to take a step back and go, what in our business is working? Are these mm -hmm. retreats working? And do I love them enough? Do we love them enough? to make them the best in the marketplace. How can we innovate? How can we charge more? What does it look like if we put the mass amounts of our energy towards making this work? Does that make sense? Yeah, yes, definitely. It's just, you know, a lot of what we read and everything's like, choose the one thing, stay with that, don't veer. And then we're both kind of feeling called to like, Joseph right now is feeling called to doing a smoking cessation uh, residential program. Yeah. Uh, four years ago, I uh, went through a cancer ordeal that I, you know, I learned a lot through all that. And I want to do kind of a cancer recovery thing. Mm -hmm. So even though we might not be working specifically together on that same goal, we're really being called to go in that direction. But we're like a little bit scared, but even though it feels really exciting to us. What's scary? So I'm curious. What's scary about it? Is it because it's something you really want or it's just something you haven't seen done before? Um, no, we're, we're fine that it hasn't been done before. What's scary is that in order to put energy towards that, because the last two years we've been doing all of that plus our interior design business. Yes. And we just decided two and a half weeks ago, okay, we have to let go of our interior design business in order to put 152% towards all the else that we're doing. You know, it's, it's been hard. Our side gig was not just a side gig. It was like a major business that takes a lot of time and effort. So... You know, it's so hard to focus on healing when you're designing, you know, five different remodeling projects. At <laughs> yes. Once. The energy is so different. Yes. So we decided, you know what, if we're really committed to this, we kind of need to let go of the big projects, maybe just do some smaller things and just really jump with our two feet into this. And this is really what our passion is, is to really support other people to their, you know, Highest to their highest potential. Yeah, and I love this. And I think you guys have given us all a clue too. And I know this to be true in my own life. When I'm spread too thin and there's mm -hmm. too much happening, I am not at my best. Simplify yeah. to amplify, right? Simplify to amplify. So yes. I always reapply that in my life because chaos theory, like things have a way, especially when you're creative, when you're multi-passionate, when you want to help a lot of people. There's all these new projects that come into the onto your plate, all these new things that you can do. And it takes a conscious, intentional effort to say no and to peel things off of your plate. So then rather than having your focus spread so thin and it's so not powerful, you get laser focused and the whole beam of your energy and your soul fires into that one, two, or maybe even three projects. And that's when you take them up. So I yeah. think based on what y'all are saying, you're in the right zone. And here's the thing. None of us have a crystal ball when it comes to business or when it comes to any project. And I feel like when we get to the end of our lives, when we look back, we are going to be so grateful that we took the risks on things that we really believed in. Even if they don't turn out as we had hoped, there's always this incredible learning that happens. And usually it informs where we're supposed to go next, right? You could have never come to this insight or this new level. Even if we fail and flop, which I've done a million times, it always brings me to something beautiful that's next. That had I stayed safe, had I said, you know what? I'm not gonna do it because I'm afraid. 
I would have missed out on so many pieces of my life that are the most treasured. So I think you guys are right on the money. I think simplify to amplify, take a look at what's working, do more of that. And I also wanna recommend this, while I am a fan of lifelong learning, you guys are B-schoolers, so please come back as many times as you want to the community and as many times to that material. Curb yourself from signing up for any more because <laughs> e-learning stuff can be addictive. It's almost like gambling. You're like another program and another program and another program. And then you get spread so thin, but you don't master anything. You're both yeah. passionate, experienced enough. You have enough tools inside. Now is the time to apply it. Awesome. Great. Hey, we do have one question. Can we ask you? Yes, of course. Go for it. We don't know if this is, this is a place where we kind of get stuck a little bit. Yeah. So our interior design business was called sublimedesigner.com. So we were kind of known locally as the sublime guys. And then we took that and used that for our coaching business called sublime guys. But I, Joseph have a little bit of energy that maybe some people that don't know us through interior design, which is the whole rest of the world, right? <laughs> They they might have a reaction like oh who are these conceited guys showing up like hey we're sublime do what we're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he has energy about that and yeah. I feel like it's a really great branding because for 16 years we've been known as the sublime guys and all of a sudden and there's nothing wrong with knowing that you know yeah life is sublime and it can be for everyone and that's kind of where we're coming from yeah well but, I have so, I definitely have feedback on this so. Okay. Um, I consider naming in this specific instance, what you guys are talking about right now, this is a creative cul-de-sac. No one gives a shit but y'all. And here's oh. what I mean by that. So okay. what your coaching clients care about is the results that you can get them. I really don't think the name Sublime is turn offable enough. Like that's not like, oh God, I can't even get on this website because Sublime, that word is awful. Like I don't think that's the case that we're dealing with. Your right. clients who will be attracted to you, they don't even care about coaching. They don't even care. They want the results that you can promise them. So don't spend any more of your precious energy thinking about the name for that. And I know it's tempting. I know it's tempting. I know it's one of those things that you go like, but it really matters. Please trust me. It doesn't. Not at yeah. this stage. Keep going. Focus on bringing that money in. Focus on the projects that are working and getting this new business, both of your pieces of it, up and running. The naming stuff, if you're gonna change it, that can happen later. We love you so much. Thank you for a brilliant set of questions. And please, keep us posted on the progress and keep letting us know how it's going and I'll see you in the halls of B-School next semester. Awesome, sounds great. Awesome, bye you guys, <laughs> love you. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Ciao. All right, party people, that wraps it up for another episode of the Marie TV Call-In Show. Now, I would love to hear from you. We had some great callers today, some great Qs, some great As. What resonated most with you and why? Leave a comment below and let us know. Now, as always, the best damn conversations happen over at the magical land of MarieForleo.com. It's where Greg hangs Dot out. Com. Dot com. I'm there all the time. Yeah, all the time. Anyway, you need to go there and leave a comment now. And once you are there, if you're not already, please subscribe to our email list and become an MF Insider. Why? Because you're gonna get instant access to an audio I created called How to Get Anything You Want. It is so damn good. You're gonna get some exclusive content and special giveaways that frankly, I don't share anywhere else, not even on the social medias. So <laughs> stay on your game and keep going for your dreams because the world needs that very special gift that only you have. Thank you so much for watching and we will catch you next time on Marie TV. Hey, are you ready to bring your dream business to life? Is it finally time to make the difference you were born to make? Good, because we can help. Get started now at joinbschool.com. I found this lovey dovish. A lot. A lot. Well, howdy. Bonjour. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> What's your question, darling? Let's sniff. I'll stick my face in your Rice Krispie treats. Are we recording?